Today we're working on a 2002 Pontiac Grand Am. We're going to replace the outer tie rod end on the driver's side. You're going to want to take your car out ahead of time and just get a feel for when you let go of the steering wheel. You know, does it go straight down the road? I've got both hands off now. We're going pretty straight. Give it a little nudge to the right. It wants to go right. Give a little nudge to the left, it wants to go left. Get it going straight, take my hand off. It goes pretty straight, so we're, we're good there. We're going to be jacking the front wheels off the ground, so we want to go ahead and set the park brake to lock the rear wheels. It's a good idea to put a chalk under the rear wheel just for extra safety. Go ahead and get the side jacked up where you want to replace the tie rod end. We're going to add a jack stand under there. Just go ahead, put that tire wheel underneath the car. It's just one extra safety measure and it gets it out of your way. Make sure you keep your lug nuts somewhere where they don't get kicked around and lost. Now a while back I did a video on replacing the front brakes. At the time I did that I was checking different areas up here on the front, you know, looking at the CV boots, bushings, those kind of things making sure the struts aren't leaking oil, you know, anything you can look at. And at that time I noticed that the rubber boot on that tie rod end was completely messed up. You can see here that rubber boot is completely disintegrated. Now that boot holds in the grease and protects everything from the water. So once that boot gets ripped up, you let water contaminants into that joint won't be long till it goes bad. This replacement joint actually has a spot where we can add a zerk and we can grease it. This other one looks like it was factory lubed and then you don't grease it after that. Before you get too far into the job you want to do a sanity check. Just lay your new one up against the old one make sure it looks about right. I've turned the wheel so that this tie rod end is kind of sticking out here where it's easier for me to get to. Eventually we're going to have to do some smacking with a hammer. The replacement of this involves two basic steps. One, there's a nut right here that's basically a set nut. It keeps this thing from turning once it's in the proper position. So we've got to get that nut loose. Then there is a castle nut and a cotter pin. I don't see a cotter pin, but anyway, we'll get that nut loose. Then once we get that nut loose, you've got to get that to come out of this fitting. Sometimes you can pound on the nut from the bottom. Other times you smack real hard here with a hammer, and this will eventually come loose. We'll see how that goes. I put some tape on the threads there to basically make sure that that nut cannot back up very far at all. Eventually we're going to want to put the new one on just as many turns as the old one came off. So that's just, you know, kind of another way to ensure nothing gets way out of whack. Now I got pretty lucky here. I just put my 22 millimeter wrench on here and I gave this a turn and it broke loose fairly easily. That's not always the case, you know, sometimes you may have to put this up in here, you know, get a hammer or something like that, smack on the end of this wrench. In some cases, you know, you might have to add some heat with a torch or something like that, but in this case, it broke loose, so I don't want to turn it very far, just basically have to get the tension off of it. I'm surprised I don't see a cotter pin here. The new one came with the cotter pin, but this one does not have one. A short socket might not work well here because this bolt sticks down a little ways. So you might want to use 
a long socket. This particular socket I'm using is, this turned out to be an 18 millimeter socket that fits up on here. So we'll go ahead and we'll get that loose. Okay, if you can see what's happening is this bolt's turning, but it's not removing the nut, it's just spinning up on top. So this bolt does have some fittings down here, some edges, where you can get a wrench, maybe an adjustable wrench, the proper size wrench on there, and uh, start to work that off. The good news is, once I got this at least cracked loose, I can see that this is already loose. A lot of times that stud will be stuck in here and you'll have to get a hammer, give it a few good wraps, you maybe put the nut back on, you know pound up from the bottom, give it a few wraps. In this case it's loose. So in this case no fighting it there. The fact that this came out of the knuckle without any effort at all was really unusual. I don't want to give you the idea that that's usually how it is. Most of the time you're going to have to get something like a pry bar or a bottle jack, put some upward pressure on this, and then you're going to get yourself a big hammer and you're going to apply some really hard wraps to that knuckle. And I'm talking really hard and it might take, you know, 10 15, 20 times at this with some upward pressure and that'll come out. You can try putting that nut back on the, the threads here, the stud, and giving it, you know, some some upward banging, but mostly the cracks in here is what gets it. In this case, it turns out that an 8 millimeter will fit on that bottom part, and then I'll get my 18 millimeter wrench and get on here and work that nut off of that. To make things go a little easier for you as you fight that nut off of there you want to take a take a wire brush rub, rub those brush those threads off go ahead and take you a little bit of uh, penetrating oil lube those threads up Get them fairly clean before you start the battle of holding the stud and working the nut off. Works out pretty good that I can put that 8 millimeter wrench, have it wedge up against the disc brake, and then I can just grab the 18 millimeter and turn it with both hands. That technique worked pretty good most of the way off, but now there's not enough of the 8 millimeter sticking out here to grab, but there's enough slack in here that now I was able to get a vice grip up around the top. Again, it'll come over here and wedge on the disc brake rotor and then I can go ahead with my 18 millimeter finish that off the rest of the way. Had this tie rod been stuck in the knuckle you could have probably got that 18 millimeter nut off without you know holding the the center stud but uh, six and one half dozen of another in this case this was loose so now we've got that nut off of there there's no need to bang around here as I said earlier typically you're gonna have to come in here and you know bang around maybe put the nut back on hit it up from the bottom eventually you'll get this to come you know up and out now that you've got it up and out this will spin and what we're going to do is we're going to count the number of full turns before it pops out. So there was one, so I'm just going to go ahead and count the number of turns till this pops out. It ended up being 15 turns. Now I'm going to lay it right next to the new one. Just make sure we've got a basic match and it looks, you know, pretty much perfect. So now we can spin that new one back on, 15 turns. At that point, it should bottom out against the nut that we just cracked loose and we'll be very, very close. 
and for me came basically dead on coming around on 15 and there it was. Now you're going to want to clean this off just a little bit you know check it out make sure there's not a crack or anything weird. Once you do that we'll get the nut off of there we'll slip that in there get her tightened in you can see the hole in there for the cotter pin and the castle nut. In this case I doubt I'll ever have to replace this again but I might just go ahead and put just a little bit of grease right here just so it doesn't get uh, wedged in there again. So we'll go ahead drop that in here get our castle nut on the right direction get that down and, and good and tight and then we'll turn it a little bit more tight until we get a hole to line up that we can slide the cotter pan into. Now that nut goes on pretty hard because you're pulling that stud down inside that knuckle and wedging it in there so you want to make sure it's all the way in. You don't want this boot basically to have any gap up here so just keep turning and turning and turning until it basically you can't move it anymore. And then it's seated and then turn it a little bit more until you can get the cotter pin in there. There's a big part of me that wants to just hide my screw up. I told you to crank on this baby till it basically stops moving and then give it a little bit more. I was doing that and it just uh, stripped away on me. So I went off to the hardware store and I did find a castle nut but it was super thick and ugly and four dollars and forty cents so I found this lock nut here for a dollar ten it's an M12 by 1.25 thread so it's a fine thread so we're gonna go ahead and put this on there with a little blue Loctite and we'll be good I pulled this one in and cranked so hard on the castle nut that I stripped it I tried to get this back out. It's wedged in there really good now. So ended up going to the hardware store with the nut, figuring it out. Back for the fix. We've got a nylon locking nut with some blue Loctite in there. That ought to be more than adequate. I'm going to go ahead and torque this to 80 foot-pounds. We've got this locking nut, 22 millimeter. Go ahead and get that good and snugged up. Go ahead and get this grease zerk screwed in there. I gotta watch out today since I'm such a gorilla. I don't want to strip anything off, so first make sure I don't cross thread it. just want to be real delicate with these make sure you don't strip it out bust it off doesn't need to be super tight at all I'm, I'm not even gonna crank until it stops just it's good and snug in there good enough now when we give it the grease we're gonna watch that this boot fills up but ideally you wouldn't put so much in there that it started to squirt out the bottom That was about three pumps. This feels pretty solid right in here. So we're going to quit right there. You can kind of see that this new joint does have some flexibility to it, but it's pretty stiff. That old one was pretty loose. So that's normal to have some pretty stiff resistance, but definitely want to see some movement. All right, let's have a little talk about front wheel alignment. Do you need to have the car aligned after you replace this outer tie rod? This is my car. It's an old car. I've been I've been careful to count the turns, you know, put tape on the rod back there. 
measure the length, they're very close, exact replacement part from AC Delco, I say you don't need to have the front end aligned if you've been careful like we have today. Now, a lot of people are going to get upset about that, go crazy, but you know, you take your car in for an alignment, it's a hundred bucks. So in this case, I'm saying no, this is my car, I can do what I want to do. If I worked at a business, I would tell somebody, yes, you need to have it aligned. Because I don't want them coming back after they've talked to somebody else, looked on the internet, and everybody's saying, oh, you got to have the front end aligned. You're going to ruin your tires. Okay, great, go have your front end aligned. But for me, I say no, I'm not going to align the front end. I'm going to take it out, drive it, as long as everything feels the same as it did before, it's not pulling, I'm going to call it good. Everything's tightened up, we've greased it, we're all ready to go. Last step, we want to take a little bit of brake clean. Clean paper towel, clean towel, whatever. Wipe off any greasy fingerprints that we've left behind here. So now throw it all back together. We'll take it out for that test drive. And after that, I'm going to call it good. This is probably the factory one. This one had no grease zerk, permanently lifetime greased. Actually still moves around pretty well. But as you can see, the boot is just completely disintegrated on this one. So it wouldn't have been long till moisture got in there and that joint in there went bad. Went ahead and grabbed that boot and just kind of ripped it off of there. You can see what's up inside there. There's just a just a ball in there. Now when I'm going straight, I look down at the wheel and it's turned. So that's kind of goofy, but you know, that's the way it is. That could be corrected. We'll worry about that later. I might have to take back some of what I said about the alignment. After I got done, I went out for a test drive. The steering wheel was crooked. So when I got back, I drove it straight in. Got the steering wheel to where it looked straight. This wheel looked like it was cocked out. So I've gotten in here now. loosened that jam nut and then turn that inner tie rod to force the the back of this out until this you know looks straight here but it's been quite a correction right there of about oh a little over an eighth of an inch something like that so I've got the car up in the air kinda of turn this back and forth settle in at dead straight. I realize this is backwoods hillbilly engineering but I've got a string line pulled from the back to the front and I watch it just touch the tire back there and then I kinda compare that to where I'm at here and I'm pretty close. I've got the steering wheel straight. I take a measurement here at the front and I'm about I don't know, two and a half and back here I'm more like right on two so we'll make another slight adjustment bring this back end out a little bit I've got them evened up there's the amount of adjustment so I mean it's not much like I said earlier about an eighth of an inch we'll do the same thing to the other side got this side set up this side was always pretty dang close. Let's see how, how it measures out. And once you get that jam nut backed off there a little bit, you can get a wrench on the flat spots of that inner tie rod. You can turn it and drive it in or out of the outer tie rod and push this wheel one way or the other. So I've got them all to where they measure straight to me compared to the back wheels. So let's take it out for a test drive. Okay, here we are, hands free. I'm drifting a little bit, but uh, you know, as far as straight, we got that taken care of. Straight is now straight. 
we'll get it out on a straight road and check the alignment. Okay, here's straight down the road. Take my hands off. If I push it right, it goes right. Hands is off. Going straight down the road. I'd say that's pretty good. Okay, if you would, refrain from the comments about, you know, take it in to get it aligned. I give in. Take your car in to get it aligned after you put a new tie rod on, okay? Uh, certainly, if you're going down the street and your wheel's crooked, and then when you pull it in the driveway and you got the wheel facing straight and you get out and you can tell one wheel is cocked off one direction, you got a problem. So, that was my situation. I corrected it and got it fairly straight. Seems to be working good. I'm not going to spend 100 bucks to get this car aligned. I can buy a new tire for $100. And anyway, my daughter will probably run it into a curb or run it flat by the time these tires run out. So anyway, take it in, get it aligned. Now this factory one had a coarse thread and a lock nut with no cotter pin. The new one was supposed to have a cotter pin and a castle nut, but because the fine threads in there and there's just not that much meat, I ended up stripping that out. So off to the store to buy a locking nut and we put a little blue Loctite on it. When they align your car at the shop, they're going to put a little bit of what they call toe in. So the front of the tires are a little closer together than the back. That tends to make your car want to go wherever you point it. But with the method we're using today, it's about impossible to actually get close enough to even worry about that. So just get them as straight as you can.